What makes a great weekend road trip? For us, it's something that is less than half a day's drive away, offers stunning beauty, and has many places you can choose to stop along the way, while winding up somewhere that's both scenic and relaxing. Cambria is an excellent choice any time of year. In this video, we'll show you some highlights of the trip we took in mid-March of 2022. Our goal is to show you how to do the trip like a local. A special welcome to our elite group of subscribers. We'd like to thank you for your continued support. The best way to start the drive is by taking Pacific Coast Highway through Malibu, traveling between the beaches and the rugged cliffs of the Santa Monica Mountains. If you want to pass as a local, just say PCH. You'll pass the large sand hill where many folks learn to sand ski and go through a stretch of road where they film virtually every new car commercial with Magoo Rock in the background. This landmark means you're a quick five minutes from our first stop, the Naval Air Station Point Magoo Missile Park. Here you can stretch your legs and take a self-guided tour through various historic missiles developed at the Pacific Missile Test Range. Where else can you walk freely among such exotic equipment? Do not stand here during normal operation. This is the Regulus. It's the smaller one of the largest. Even supermarkets are getting into the missile game. The Polar is. Good first stop on the journey to Cambria and wine tasting. Stop and look at munitions and weapons delivery systems. We join Highway 101 in Oxnard before resuming our drive along the coast, along a 14-mile beach stretch known as the Rincon, where we can take in the views of the Channel Islands National Park to the south. After passing through Carpinteria and Santa Barbara, we took a short detour for a lunch break at Henry's Boathouse, right on the beach in Arroyo Burro Beach. We fell in love with their lobster rolls, which have become a bit of a tradition whenever we're in the area. After lunch, we continue on the scenic drive over the San Marcos Pass Road, giving us great ocean views when we're going up to the pass, then views of Lake Kachuma and the Santa Ynez Valley coming down. We typically stop at the town of Los Olivas for local wines to enjoy during the rest of the weekend. There are dozens of winery tasting rooms and wine shops in this quaint little town. From here, it's less than a five minute drive to rejoin Highway 101, which passes through more vineyards and ranch lands until you drive through Santa Maria and onto the scenic coast of Pismo Beach, a picturesque 20 minutes further down the road. After passing through some more coastal hill country, we reach San Luis Obispo where we turn off on Highway 1 to pass the Gibraltar of the Pacific, Morro Rock. We stopped at the nearby town of Cayucos to pick up some treats at a local favorite, the Brown Butter Cookie Company. We even checked out the local antique store to stretch our legs. From Cayucos, it's a short scenic 20 minute drive to the Moonstone Beach area of Cambria and our hotel, the Blue Dolphin Inn. We settled down on the patio overlooking the Pacific Ocean and enjoying some wine and snacks. A good thing to do, sit down and have some wine. Yes, it does. I like it. That evening, we enjoyed a sunset walk along the famed boardwalk before having dinner at the nearby Moonstone Beach Bar and Grill. It was nice to be able to have a short walk back to our hotel that evening. Good morning. <laughs> we made an audible. We're going to go to McWay Falls, which is way north. Yeah, all of 51 miles. <laughs> the next day, we were told to expect intermittent rain, so we decided to continue driving up Highway 1. In 57.4 miles, you'll arrive at Midway Falls. <laughs> Very difficult navigation. This road is often closed for months following heavy rains. However, when we visited, we had no issues. Before taking on this drive, always consult local traffic maps to see how far the road is open. The drive is one of the prettiest in the world since the highway is carved into the cliffs the whole way after you pass Ragged Point. When you get to the park and take the short walk under the highway, you're treated to one of the prettiest little coves anywhere, accentuated with a tidal waterfall that dumps right onto the beach. It's hard to believe that this was once private land and the owners built a house on the cliffside looking down on this amazing cove. After looking over this scenic gem, we turned around to take in stops wherever we saw an interesting pullout, making up facts along the way. See, that's a rocky coastline. You should not do the Bali beach parking on this beach. Never. You're going to lose your bottom and you might lose your lawnmower engine. <laughs> that's a sad thing right there. There used to be an entire forest of cypresses here and they all got washed away and there's only that one remaining on the rock. Sad. So this is a really interesting spot. This is where Father Junipero Serra first learned how to cliff jump. The coastal views are definitely better when heading south on this road because you're on the right side next to the cliff during the drive. 
The rain didn't put much of a damper on our drive since visibility was never fogged in. After a leisurely morning of sightseeing with multiple vista points, we had lunch at the restaurant at Ragged Point Inn, where the famous art installation of Gateway to Big Sur is located. We all decided this would be a spectacular place to stay on a future trip. The grounds were gorgeous and the views were stunning. Here we are, Ragged Point Inn, around all this stuff here. Ragged stuff. Ragged. It's that point also that's ragged. Our next stop was the Elephant Seal Vista Point, where we hiked along the coastal trails, stopping for a while to observe the seals basking along the coast. It's a must-see because there's no place outside of the Channel Islands to see these world's largest pinnipeds up close. We decided to go into town for dinner. We discovered the Black Cat Bistro on Main Street. It was great. Another secret hideaway. Oh my gosh. The next morning, we packed up and went into the East Village to see the historic buildings and shops since the rains had passed. We took in the sights around town and let breakfast settle a little bit and even hoofed it up to the old Santa Rosa Chapel and Cemetery. It was an interesting slice of history offering nice views of the town from the hill. Afterwards, we took the picturesque drive east along Santa Rosa Creek Road to visit Lynn's Farm Store, the origin of Lynn's restaurant and the source of the town's famous Olala berries. Unfortunately, it was closed, but the drive is always worth Your visit. next adventure. We then started our journey back home along Highway 1 with a stop at Harmony, a tiny town with a winery, glassworks, pottery shop, a creamery, and an old chapel, along with some whimsical art installations. This is Harmony's famous holy cow. The town got its name in 1907 when the owners of the creamery and local ranchers called off their fatal feud and decided on the name to symbolize their truce. Yeah, hold still. It's best in a video. Or at least say something. We are here harmonizing. I'm out. Our next stop was Moro Rock Beach, where we could take a closer look at this giant rock massif while being pelted by heavy winds. Its volcanic peak formed 23 million years ago, and it's part of a chain of volcanic plugs known as the Nine Sisters, which you can see while driving towards San Luis Obispo. For lunch, we stopped in downtown San Luis Obispo at the Granada Hotel and Bistro, where we enjoyed a delicious lunch and got a taste of this historic small town. After lunch, we made the three-hour drive home along the 101, enjoying our final views of the ocean to on this low-stress scenic drive. If you're looking for a gorgeous, no-hassle weekend getaway from Los Angeles, or if you're visiting the city and just want a taste of California's central coast, you can't do much better than spending a couple of nights in Cambria. It's a year-round option where you can always discover something new. If you have suggestions of where to stay or eat along this route, please put them in the comments. If you have suggestions or other great road trips, please let us know. If you'd like more of this content, please like and subscribe so that the YouTube algorithm can suggest these films to others. Thanks for watching.